videos are a documentary-style training series that pairs up the two-time Arnold Classic champion and Mr. Olympia contender with less experienced bodybuilders, giving them a chance to learn from someone at the elite level of the sport, and giving us a chance to listen in as Kai gives back a little of the knowledge he has gained during his years as a pro bodybuilder. Kai, feeling a little under the weather, still made it to Bev Francis Powerhouse Gym on Long Island to help aspiring young bodybuilder Rick Francois learn a few things about training chest and about what it takes to be a bodybuilder. If you've seen the previous Train With Kai episodes, you know that every workout begins with a 12-minute warm-up that prepares both the body and the mind for the task ahead. A lot of times people come to the gym in the beginning and they get caught up in this machine, that machine, how to make the machine work. Spend so much time focused on the machines that they pay not enough attention to the most important machine, and that's you, your body. You use this to get my mind clear, and focus on what you're doing, while getting your heart rate up, warming yourself up, <clears throat> you start to take a mental inventory. The muscle groups you're gonna be training, and you start thinking about them, be conscious of them. So the warm-up is very much a part of a mental exercise. Here, squeeze. Here, squeeze, no laps. Chest. You drop the ball until I can't see it. Right back up to the top, constant flexion on your chest. When we, uh, when we started the workout, I think I was still in shock. I mean, I was just really awestruck. The first thing I could say to myself was, I'm actually standing next to Kai Green. That was, that was the first thing. I'm not watching a video, I'm actually sitting next to Kai Green. Take it back, take it back, and back up, right up, squeeze here. Take it back, squeeze here. Good, let's go. Born in Port Au Prince, Haiti, Rick emigrated to New Jersey at a young age, and similar to Kai, grew up in a somewhat dangerous and economically depressed area. Also like Kai, he was inspired by comic books and superheroes and began to build his body. This eventually led him to the stage, where he won the New Jersey NPC Teen and First Timers class of the Mid-Atlantic, and then the Teen class of Muscle Beach, and the light heavy, novice and teen at the New Jersey State Championships. His goal now is to take those early successes and build upon them. I had no idea how difficult this was going to be, actually. I mean, he was just tweaking my form ever so slightly, but it made all the difference. He's very wise, and he's a really good teacher. He found different ways to help me understand the concept he was trying to get across. You ever see a most muscular done this way? Where you're pulling your arm, you're using your chest, the contraction of your chest, to pull your arms across. And they're sitting, so you're picking the chest up and they're sitting down. So you have round delts and everything. It's a really complete, nice picture, at least from the top of the thorax up. What you're doing here is you're doing the same crossover, crossover motion, but instead of pulling one arm over the other, they both are reaching to each other. So you're doing, you're, you're doing this and reaching over, but because your, your, your hands are static, and your elbows are now static, it looks like just like you're pulling. You know, when you take your, your, your serratus out of it and you still concentrate on doing this, this is what you're doing when you're doing that. It's, it's, it's almost like a static contraction. Okay, no Ricky, probably learning from previous Train With Kai episodes, knows not to make the same mistake that others have made and he opts for using a lighter weight in order to pay attention to Kai's coaching of the little details. It's a smart move, as you will see, because Kai's adjustments will stress Ricky in ways he had never known possible. Two. Eight, this is where your mind should be, right here. Nine, try to squeeze my fingers. 10, try to squeeze my fingers. 11, come on, let's go. Harder, harder, let's go. 18, let's go, let's go. I felt really, really caught up in 
in trying to understand the depth that he wanted me to really go with my whole chest motion, the concept, you know, you, it's, it's almost as though you're watching somebody play, uh, fo you know, play football, but you don't know exactly what their body goes through until you're on the field themselves. No, 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 see what you just did? What did you just do? Like no, but when you did that, what did you do up top? You did this. You did this. You did. I could see that through your clothing. This is not about moving weight as much as it's about making a contraction. Squeeze, 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 squeeze. Flex your chest. Flex your chest. Let's get it. This whole time that you're doing this, you need to be thinking: Can I flex this harder? Can I flex it harder? What would it feel like if I flex this harder? One. Two, three, four, yes, five, six, come on. After finishing this exercise, Kai notices a photo among the many pictures of great bodybuilders from the past and uses it to illustrate a point. What he's doing is he's reaching across himself, but he's not just reaching across and holding himself. He's flexing, he's, he's using his mind to call these muscles online and to contract. As they contract, they bring his arms over. So while his arms are here, he's applying pressure where these muscles have contracted, they've pulled his arms together, and now he's using isometric tension to keep a contraction on his chest. Does that make sense? All right. Now whether he raises his arms up, or in this case, brings them down. Sure, his serratus is working a little bit, but in order to do what he's doing, he's resisting each arm and using the contraction that you just did that allows them to pull your arms over to hold them down here. So that's a contraction. Now, he's finishing that by trying to use his mind and remember to flex his delt on his traps and then flex his his shoulders by trying to pull his arms apart simultaneously. So he's got a contraction occurring here this way, a contraction occurring this way, and a contraction occurring this way, and then putting his traps into it. When you, tra when you train your chest, you should have a mental Rolodex or an, an archives of photos like that, that you should be able to just flip through in your mind as soon as you close your eyes. You should be able to see the best photograph of Bird of Fox, those beautiful black and whites they have in Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding. Mike Christian, you know. Any person that you've ever seen that demonstrates something or the very, uh, uh, um, the reference of something that we're working on, you know. Um, mental imagery is very, very important. And this is a time when you do it like this that it can serve you. Um, so. Yeah, when you're contracting your muscles through your shirt, when you're, when you're on the bench, and you can't see yourself anymore, but when you're on the bench, your mind is still alive. And you should be able to go into the, the back of your mind and find photographs like that, that are clear. You should be able to see that and put it in your mind. It should be there just as clear, just as vivid, you know, if not more, you know? And you should be able to imagine each one of those fibers that cross strike and the things that pop out. You should be able to see that in your mind and imagine that here on you as you are working. And each time you contract, you want to imagine that that is coming. That is the result. That is the result. Whether you can see it or not in real life, whether someone else across the room can see that on you or not, doesn't matter. As long as you can see it and it's alive and it's real in your mind. It out and up. Eight, come on, let's go. Nine, come on. Ten, come on. Let's go. Eleven, uh uh, that's crap. Let's go, man. This is light ass weight. Let's go. Come on. Uh, 
Okay, throw that away. The purpose, the benefit of being able to use lighter weight is to walk through some of those mechanics that you would otherwise take for granted and leave on the sideline for the sake of moving heavier amounts of weight. Nobody to impress here. Act like that camera is not here. Never mind if your boys will talk about you. I saw Kai do that and he was, he was using light ass weight. I could do that. Maybe you can. Could I come here and try to impress you? Or you? Maybe, on a good day. But right now, uh, we want to inspire you to think. Think. This isn't just up and down. There's an arc. This is an exaggeration of that arc. This bar is moving in an arc, if you can see it from the side. Even if I drop it to my, to my, to my throat, there's still an arc. Now what I'm doing is I'm coming down under control. My muscles are stretched at the bottom. I power it up from here with a contraction on my chest. That contraction is responsible for moving this thing. Throughout the complete range of motion, I have control. My muscles, the contraction of my muscles are what's making this bar move. I think movement, my muscles respond accordingly. This bar moves as a product of that. This stuff stopping short up here, that's ridiculous. Full range of motion. Stretch your muscle, contract it, stretch your muscle. You notice at the bottom where it's stretched, there's still tension on the tissue. The tissue is still under contraction, even in a maximum stretch. One, two, three. Think contraction on your chest. Four. The little changes to my form were really starting to wear me down at this point. I was trying to keep up. Honestly, I really was. I knew what Kai wanted, but I found it more and more difficult to deliver. None of that short choppy shit. Let's go all the way down to the bottom. All the way down. Nah, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. That's garbage. Give it to the church. Let's go all the way down. Yeah, all the way down here. Now press. Come on, you got help here. You got help here. Let's go. Get bold now with it. Get bold with it. All the way down to the bottom. Stretch it and squeeze. Okay, throw it away. Believe it or not, without this, to throw, load up the bar, without the ability to do this and be conscious of making those contractions, loading up the bar and everything, this puts you closer to injury and you're not really going to work your chest. You load the bar, you're working more front delt, working more tricep, working more back. Here come contest time. Yeah, I bench, I bench 315. My max is 315, my max. Is... Take off your shirt, have no chest. Chest is flat. Being able to make that mind and muscle connection is the beginning, the beginning of avoidance of that kind of problem, all right? All right, we're going to do one more set, then we're going to move on to flat. Something else. <clears throat> now this isn't for me, this is for you. All the way down here. Stretch and contraction at the same time. Here, up, up, up. Control, control. 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 Even when the weight's heavier, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to squeeze my chest. Squeeze my chest, 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 squeeze my chest. Now this starts to hurt. And as it hurts, I start to feel like I'm getting weaker and I feel like I'm breaking down and get fatigued. This is when you start to call on aggression. And you keep squeezing your chest, because that's what we're doing. You know? But the aggression and all that stuff has no place if you don't have the right, the right fundamentals already in order. Does that make sense? All right, let's go. One, two, 
three, four, squeeze your chest, let's get it, five, chest all day, let's go, six, chest all day, let's go. Kai was really pushing me. It definitely took me to a new level, and at one point, I thought I was gonna have to make a quick bathroom break. Just, just, just to, you know, just to settle the system. There's another time for forced reps and spotting. This isn't that time. I'm sorry. Um, actually, some people put their feet up because it helps them yeah. use your chest and. Yeah, if you want to, if you feel comfortable that way, knock yourself out. I knew that what he was telling me and trying to get me to do was extremely valuable, but my muscles just weren't responding anymore. It was kind of frustrating, actually, but I guess I should have expected it. Whoa, okay. Okay. Okay, so if that's happening, that may mean that this is a weight that's too heavy to be doing 15 reps with and still trying to squeeze your chest. Whether it's 400 pounds, 135, this is what, this is what you're trying to do, you know? Now, believe it or not, those mechanics would change if I were trying to be a power with it. I finally had to give in and start to admit to myself that I needed to greatly reduce the weight. Not just a little either, in order to get the most from the session with Kai. That looks pretty. <clears throat> Real pretty. It is important to remember that weight training for bodybuilding is isolation training. We want to single out a particular muscle or group of muscles and put pressure on them to grow in a way that is more focused than standard weightlifting can accomplish. The first step to achieving this is to alter the way we think about training and be careful of the things we say to ourselves. Kai knows this better than just about anyone. Maximum stretch, maximum contraction. I don't want, I don't want this. I don't want to get this short, choppy stuff. Once we start moving on to, you know, we start moving on to the flies, um, even that threw me off also, that threw me off. When I usually see people do flies, their arms just open straight out and they just do the whole contraction. It's a single movement for them. Uh, but when they explain from Kai's point of view, the word contraction means that much more, uh, a lot more than I even thought it would meant. So I'm conscious now of of how the words used inspire me to think. When I think press, I'm thinking triceps, front delts, and chest. When I think when I'm in order to do this movement, I'm thinking just contract my chest. So when I'm trying to contract, I'm trying to stretch and contract my chest. So with that, I'm not. Let's see what your form looks like. This is a difficult and subtle point Kai is trying to make. Instead of thinking press, which is a thought only about moving the weight and may cause you to recruit muscles other than the pectorals, think only about contracting the chest muscles and the weight will move automatically, but in a way that is most productive for that target muscle. It, 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 you know, it looks good. I see press, though. I see press, but I'm, before I tell you it's wrong, I'm trying to think about what it looks like when I do it, you know? Because it could be possible that I'm thinking one thing and what I'm actually demonstrating is something else. So I want to try to walk through it again. Keep going, don't, don't. All right, stop. Okay. 
Good job. Good job. Let's throw that away. Let's throw that away. <clears throat> Kai searches for a specific machine to make one final point about body mechanics. Believe it or not, it was just probably, probably three years ago when I really just felt something click where my ability to feel confident with doing efficient incline dumbbell flies. Um, one of the things that helped me was actually the pec deck. So let's try this. We want to do this, we want to mimic the same, the same thing. One thing that I saw you do over there was I said, look, you were off alignment and you were leaning, you were coming down without control. You were going to hurt your shoulder. It looked like you already had some kind of problem with your shoulder. That's, that's from the first, first year of training. Mm -hmm. I was so caught up with the weight. I didn't pay attention to what I was supposed to be doing. All right. So we're going to leave that alone. We're going to walk through this. And this, this machine is really cool because it allows you the ability to, to do stupid stuff and kind of learn a little bit while still being able to isolate your chest. Elbows high. I knew that what he was telling me One. and trying to get me to do was extremely valuable, but my muscles just weren't responding anymore. By this point, I was really, really, really hurting. Completely spent, you know? But I finally felt like I was getting it. It's definitely something that I enjoyed. It was, there was no point that I wanted to leave or quit. It just, it was all something I just wanted to take and how am I gonna benefit from this and apply it to the next, you know, my own next training session. I just wanted to make sure that I improve. Quarter turn to the right. At the end of the training, Ricky asks Kai for some posing pointers, but gets so much more than he expected. I applaud you for getting, you know, getting ready for your first show, going through, following through that whole experience, you know, um, that was a giant step into a larger world, you know, you kind of left behind, the, maybe, you know, I'd like to do that one day, you know, and you actually went, and you did it, you dieted, you prepared, you trained, and you accomplished it. Now, going forward, what do you want to do? Pro. Definitely. I'm not going to allow myself to stop me, mm -hmm. but I know what it I know what it takes for me to do it. Mm -hmm. It's all or nothing, and I'm willing to do it. The achievement of great things, though, comes from, you know, um, the ability to manage yourself very, very, very well, you know, or at least well enough where you almost become compulsive about getting certain things done, you know? Um, you have to set a standard for yourself that is very, very, very high, you know? Um, and you have to manage yourself to keep your thoughts where they need to be in order to allow you to be successful at what you're trying to do. One way you can say, absolutely, I can, is not with your mouth, but with your actions. And actions are the product of thought. So if you're continuing to think, like I was saying when we were training, am I doing this as, as, as good as I can? Can I command more from myself? Am I, am I connecting with this muscle as, 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 as intensely as I can? can I, am I training hard enough? You know, can I train harder? Your thoughts are gonna be everything, you know. Someone can stand here today and see you go through your poses and be like, okay, well, either you have it or you don't have it or whatever. But in truth, who are they to say? They don't know. There are people that 20 years ago, 15 years ago, you know, stood there with me and called out those poses for me just like I called them out for you. And with each quarter turn and with each, you know, grimace staring back at myself in the mirror, trying to, you know, do the right thing and be 
you know, demonstrative of being the good athlete, you know, can they see my potential? Will they believe in me? In truth, I don't even know those people anymore. So going forward from here today, this experience is not, you know, to be coming back here thinking, okay, we're gonna pose for Kai Green and, you know, he's gonna, I have nothing to tell you. I'm, and whether I do or don't, it's not gonna make or break what you will go from this point on and become what you will achieve in your life because I don't have no say over that, you do, you know? So what you choose to do, what you choose to get out of this experience today is up to you. It's such a big job what you're saying you wanna be able to do that some things cannot be a sticking point. It just can't, you know what I mean? It's like, um, you know, someone says, hey, I wanna be able to bench 500 pounds. But as soon as you put two quarters on the bar, they're bitching and talking, ah, oh, that bar hurts, that's heavy. Damn, the bitch starts oozing out of them. You know, you wanna tell them, dude, that's, what are you talking about? I'm not gonna talk about how stressful my diet is anymore. You know, I'm not gonna talk about how, you know, you know, even, even certain, certain pieces of our despair has to be like, we just don't have time for it. After working with and talking to Kai, he helped me realize it's okay to devote large amounts of energy to a goal which is worth having. If you want something big, you're gonna have to give a lot to get it. And this sport, or any sport, really anything in life. I'm a powerful dude. I can command into existence what I say, and I'm not, I'm not afraid to do the work necessary to make it so. There's a certain kind of resilience and toughness that you are also going to have to, you know, be willing to accept. It just comes along with it. I can't be a king and walk around looking like a peasant, doing things that are expected of a peasant. If I am a king, then I, I am a king. And I got to do, I expect of myself to do the things that a king does. So you're recognizing yourself as a powerful dude. And if you... If you are really that, then, you know, do your abs, do your abs. Stay on your diet when you need to. When you say you're gonna do something, follow through with it. Don't get distracted by the flash, you know. The, the lesson in this is that you're able to do what you need to do when you say you're gonna do it. his workout with MuscleMed's latest breakthrough, Amino Decanate. Part of the new DecaDrive series, Amino Decanate is designed to trigger maximum anabolic effects and prevent rate-limiting amino acid deficiencies and catabolism. New research shows that while BCAAs and glutamine are the major players in muscle growth, 15 other amino acids, known as critical core amino acids, also play an important role. Each serving of Amino Decanate provides all 19 critical amino acids for peak muscle building, maximum performance, and optimal recovery. Amino Decanate is specially formulated to maximize its absorption in the intestines, thereby allowing greater uptake and transport of aminos directly into the bloodstream. What that means is you will get bigger and stronger faster. Kai Green is powered by Amino Decanate you can be too. Check out the full line of MuscleMed supplements now at MuscleMedsRx.com.